Hey, this is JoJo the HVAC Man here. And today I want to say hello to everybody out there, whether you're uh, East Coast, West Coast, I don't know, day, night, depends on where in the world you are, but I want to say thanks for coming. And today I want to talk about the dew point and bubble point. So not been a big deal in our residential HVAC world uh, for R22 and R12 and R410A, really, they've all been just one thing. But now we got this dew point and bubble point uh, that is for R54B. And so I wanted to just do a little video for it. It's really not complicated, it's very simple. So hope you like it, let me know what you need and uh, hit the like and subscribe to Jojo the HVAC Man. Here you go. Okay, hey everybody, this is Jojo the HVAC Man. It's been a while since I've seen you. I've been uh, quite busy, <laughs> um, but I wanted to do a new video here. It's not gonna take long, but it's simplifying, I believe, uh, the dew point and the bubble point for R54B that the majority of the systems are going to have in it. And, um, and dew point and bubble point's been around for a long time, all right? But we really haven't had to worry about it. R22, R12, uh, you know, they didn't have any glide, so to speak. Um, R410A had a minimal negligible glide, um, which it pretty much was a near azeotrope, acted just like the rest of them. But for the R454B products out there, you're gonna have people talking about a glide. And I don't want you to get too confused by it. It really is not a great big deal. There's been a lot of discussions about it on other YouTubers that are doing a great job. Just thought I'd give my try at trying to help everybody understand. So um, I've got over here, this is R54B, okay? And what it is is that We've got a point in the refrigerant to where it doesn't go from a liquid to a gas right away, okay? Like for instance, uh, R410A, R22, you know, it was say 410A at about 135 PSIG. We were running around, uh, say a 45 degree evaporator coil. And if you were one degree above 45, you're into superheat. If you're one degree below 45, you were in uh, to subcooling or Really, we're worried about that on the condenser. Um, but we're really just looking at when do I, what number do I use for superheat and what number do I use for subcooling? So I'm going to pick um, the evaporator and the condenser to show you what you're looking at. So if we got the evaporator over here, all right, that's my evaporator. I know it looks like a tent, but eh, it's an A cold. Right? And then we got the condenser, keep it simple, all right? So the evaporator, what we want to know is how much superheat we picked up in the evaporator, okay? And so whenever we enter in the evaporator coil through the metering device, right? It meters in, it drops the pressure, the temperature drops, the pressure drops, and it enters into the evaporator coil. And it enters in at a certain temperature, and then when it leaves, it's a certain temperature, right? And when we measure it in a residential field, we're typically measuring the suction line as it enters back into the condenser. So it travels from the evaporator to the condenser, and that's typically where we're measuring our superheat. So we're measuring it after it travels down the suction line. So the difference between dew and bubble Dew point is where we are, have reached the gas state. Okay, we are about to, we're right here at saturation and any degree above the dew point is all gas. Okay, so everything above this line is gas. Everything below this line is liquid okay and in between well, in between bubble and dew point 
we'll be using that marker again. <laughs> uh, put it over here, the defunct ones. Anything in between those two lines, the bubble and the dew, the refrigerant's still changing phase, okay? It's, there's a glide. Now that glide is happening between the bubble point and the dew point. This is the glide temperature. So let me give you an example. The pressures stay the same, by the way. It's just the temperature that's changing somewhat, all right? So I want to look at uh, 365 PSIG on 454B, R54B. So I'm going to go to my handy dandy app. I like the Dan Foss uh, app. It just seems to work so much better. At least I like it. It's louder. Okay, so I got 454B here, and at 362 PSIG, the dew point is 115.5 degrees. All right, so the refrigerant at 362 PSIG is running about 115 and a half degrees for dew point. Any degree above that 115.5 is superheat, okay? So if you round it off to 116, if we're measuring a suction line temperature of 126, that'd be a 10 degree superheat. Now the bubble is right before it all is a liquid. So we're right at the cusp of subcooling. Okay, so the bubble at 362 PSIG, the bubble temperature, you get your little app here from due to bubble, and it's 113.3 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so the difference between 115 or say 116 and 113 is 3 degrees. So there is a three degree glide in between the bubble and the dew. That's all that means because we have different refrigerants. So they're boiling off and they're condensing at different temperatures. Now, what does that mean for you out in the field? No worries, okay, no worries at all. In the field, we're looking for subcooling, leaving the condenser and superheat, leaving the evaporator, right? So over here on our evaporator, you know, we're running roughly about a 45, 43 degree evaporator coil. All right, I'm gonna, you know, we might run as a little cold as 40, but on the average we're running around 43 to 45. Okay, so I'm gonna choose a 43 degree saturated coil. All right, well, 43 degrees where? Is it 43 degrees in bubble? Or is it 43 degrees at dew? That's the question. Do we use bubble or do we use dew? Well, anytime you want to measure superheat, okay? Because when we leave the evaporator, what are we? We're all gas. So we're talking about up here. So we always want to look at the dew point temperature. So in the evaporator, if I go over here and I'm going to choose a 45 degree coil, all right? So if I want a 45 degree dew point, so that any degree after that is superheat, so 45 degrees dew point is 123 PSIG pressure, okay? And remember, when you're using this uh, refrigerant slider from Dan Foss, you guys don't forget, be sure it's not on the absolute. We'll make sure that you turn off the absolute and make it gauge. You'll see it up there on the right-hand side. Now, once we know what dew point is, we know that 45 degrees is right there. The 
It's like saturation before it pops up into superheat. Now, if I'm reading, um, and I said 45, so we do 45 right here. Okay? So if I'm reading 45 degree coil, dew point, and I leave the evaporator and I enter in the condenser at 55 degree, that means I've got 10 degrees of superheat. So basically I, I measured whoop, 55 degrees. So I've gathered 10 degrees of superheat above the dew point. So when it comes to the evaporator and when it comes to doing your superheat, you want to look, well, what is my dew point temperature? And then compare your suction line to the dew point and there's your superheat. Now, when it comes to the condenser, all right, uh, I'm going to pick 115. Now, where did I get 115 from? All right. Well, remember, if you're working with a 14 to 16 sear condenser, and you want the saturation temperature of the refrigerant to be 20 degrees above ambient air coming into the condenser. All right, that's air over air over ambient or amb saturation over ambient. Okay, so remember we want to jack the temperature of the condenser higher than the outside air temperature, so we will release the heat into the outside air, reject the heat, right? Just like the evaporator, we lower. The temperature of the evaporator to absorb heat out of the return air and now all that heat we absorb from the return air we want to reject it out of the condenser so we got to pump up the pressure and temperatures in the condenser oh, i almost said pump up the volume <laughs> all right so yeah uh so if we've got uh 95 degrees outside coming in right and if it's a 14 to 16 sear system the average one's out there right I'm going to add 20 to that outside air temperature, and that's going to be 115 degrees. That's, that's really where I want my saturated temperature to be inside the condenser. And that's going to be my bubble temperature, bubble, all right, because we want to go down to a liquid. So if my leaving temperature, so this 45 degree dew point is the leaving temperature of the evaporator and then you measure how much heat it picked up afterwards. Then the leaving temperature of my condenser, let's just say that's the outlet going into the liquid line. Then this temperature is going to be 115 degrees and that is bubble. Okay, that's bubble. The minute it leaves the condenser, we start cooling it down and now we're into subcooling. So if you're a liquid line, I may have to go over to this side. <laughs> All right, but if our liquid line is leaving the condenser and we measure that liquid line temperature to be 105 degrees, then we've got five degrees of subcooling. I'm okay. 10 degrees of subcool. 10 degrees of subcool. So we cooled the refrigerant down. Whoop, 10 degrees. That's it. So dew point is used for superheat. Bubble is used for subcooling. Hope that makes sense. Hope it helps you out. And if you got any questions, hit me up in the chat or send me an email. Either one works just fine. So this is JoJo the X back then. Talk to you later. Have a great day. Stay hydrated and see you later.